Hello everyone and welcome to another latest mix of build videos that I create for your enjoyment. Today's build I have is one focusing around the resentment skill, again with a slightly bigger twist than last time. But this time, I'm creating a build as if you were playing the beast himself, the devil Jill. And I like to personally call this one the everlasting apex build, which will give you a rightful power that you deserve. Now like my last resentment build, it's going to be following the same path again with focusing on taking on damage to increase our base damage, and being relentless on the monster so we can get our money's worth. At the same time, I've also decided to add in other skills that I believe would meld well in terms of aggressiveness, such as Power Breaker when combining with an Explosive Sword and Shield, and Speed Eating for faster health recovery when using potions or consumables that gives buffs and etc. I found that adding small quality of life skills, and skills that combine well with other skills like statuses that combine with, say for example, Power Breaker and Blast Status, can work within your favour such as allowing you more uptime for damage, and also allowing you to, at the same time, break monsters apart on the fly much easier. But, it also prevents you from dying so easily, which comes from the speed eating skill, but will be kind of hard, but not generally tough, to do when playing a risky build where you have to take damage to make the build work, or else half of the build won't work within your favour, and it's kind of redundant if you have one half of the build that's working and the other half that isn't. Now, I've also tied in latent power within the set, as it also benefits you well, as activating the skill has two conditions, where condition 1, it will activate after a few in-game moments, while condition 2 activates after taking X amount of damage, and I believe that's around 180 or plus more, which once again combines well with the resentment skill, and will allow you to activate it sooner than later, although after it's used, it will have a cooldown, but then you can activate it again after X amount of minutes has passed, or X amount of damage has been taken. So with that comes the weapon, and I personally chose the Tower Slicer Drifter Sword and Shield, which is just a Power Lumo Sword and Shield with tacked on gold pieces, which I don't know if that's something you actually care about or not. And I personally chose this weapon for the defense buff you receive, the Blast Day is being very generous for the amount you get, and the overall damage being good for Sword and Shield, so you'll never be feeling like you're not doing enough damage in the outrun. Also, although the Power Numa Sword and Shield is better with its dual slots, augmentation slots, and blast status, I wouldn't be able to fit this into our build, as I utilize the blast skill a lot for openings, and the damage mainly comes from other skills that kick in as well. Use that sword and shield would limit me down on skills to use, as I would have to fit in three elements somehow. But of course, if you don't have this weapon, then you can always go an alternative that offers you blast status for free, and a good augmentation slot such as the Teostra Emblem, which is a good counterpart compared to the weapon I'm currently using. Now, it also comes with two augmentation slots, meaning that I can augment them to my own pleasing. However, I don't have any augmentation stones left to upgrade them, so I can't really utilize the damage or general skills anymore. But choice-wise, I would have gone the Affinity Og and Attack or Dual Slot Og, depending on your playstyle for the build and depending on the general jewels you're going to be using. You might not use the ones I use, so it's entirely up to you whether you want more damage or an extra dual slot, or even defense, it's entirely up to you at this point. Now for the skills used, I use the general following, and like always, you can always tamper and play around with it to your heart's content. So I went with the weakness exploit 3 for the 50% increase on monsters weak points, part breaker 3 to allow us to damage monsters parts much more easily, while also combining it with our blast deers for more overall damage, meaning I can destroy monsters parts on the fly within, I say, within a few hits, if the right conditions are met. Resentment 3 for the plus 50 in damage you receive when your health is in the red. Speed in 3 to allow us to heal instantly when drinking potions or consumables. And it's a skill I highly rate not to miss out on as it can really help you out in clutch moments. Which I can probably describe around 95% of the times actually happening for you. Next I use Latent Power 2 for the extra 20% affinity when conditions are met and 10% stamina reduction. Maximum Might 2 for another 20% affinity to our build. Health boost 1 to slightly increase our base damage, but this is a skill I chucked on as it was a free space available. So alternatively, you could add on Fortify if you mess up and get carted. And lastly, I have the Bludgeon skill from the Diablo's 2 piece, which increases your damage once you start to lose sharpness on the weapon. But I believe this only kicks in once you hit blue sharpness, and then green and so forth. Overall, this will give you around 273 base attack damage, 90% affinity, but only if the conditions are met and latent power is active, 401 defense, and one heck of a devil looking mix set that makes me pretty happy for fashion sense, but do add on layer armor to your boots as they look extremely odd compared to the rest of the build. Now playing around the set requires you to first make sure you have lots of spare potions and healing items on you in case you do mess up or take too much damage. 
Potions and Mega Potions should be enough for healing. But if you're going on a tempered quest with your build, then I advise you to bring some honey with you so you can create more Mega Potions on the fly. You can also bring with you some armor and demon drugs to help you out along the way, but it's optional at best as they're not really needed, but if you have the speed eating skill with you, you might as well make fully use of it. Using this set against certain monsters can be a tad tricky as some monsters move fast and hit hard, and sometimes leave you little to no room for fighting back against them. However, this doesn't mean you can't face them. You can still take on monsters such as Teostra, Lunastra, Nilgiante and Devil Jill at some points but more or less being aware of when to attack aggressively and when to hold back, as you can get caught easily with this build. But you can prevent that by playing it cool and look for the small cues to when you should dodge, attack or block. If you can master this, then your damage uptime will be very high for the whole fight and can lead to you really pushing damage out for your sword and shield. But you must remember to always take it slow first to understand the monsters you're facing. Then once you get the hand monsters movements, then you can be aggressive and not hold back. Similar to being a Devil Joe yourself, slow and steady can usually win you the race. Now if you can follow that tactic and learn how to combo your sword and shield moves, you'll do pretty good and you'll be fine for any fights you're in. And that generally comes to the end of the video. I believe this was kind of a relatively short one than my other one but really with resentment and sword and shield it's all about just keeping uptime as high as possible and just being aware of when to dodge, when to block and you should be pretty good from there. Block when you need to, as not all moves you have to take damage from. There are some moves that are way too risky to take damage on, so just kind of pace it out and know when to take damage so you can reach your damage, and when to block or dodge so you don't get instant carted. I will most likely be expanding on this set in the near future, as it does have a lot of room for improvements, but this set is very worthwhile to try for something risky and fun, if that's kind of your thing. Now, Generally, like always, if you do enjoy the content, then do leave a like and a sub, as I would genuinely love it and appreciate you if you do leave one. But like always, people, once again, thank you all for watching, and I do hope to see you all again soon.